responsibly or uh, uh, desperately? Well, I think what we're seeing here is the true colors of, of Turkey come out under these circumstances. It's somewhat ironic that uh, they're, de they're threatening to deport people because of the recognition of the Armenian genocide and the mass deportations that took place back in 1915. What I find more interesting is not just the remarks of the, uh, the, the leadership in, in, in Turkey, but also uh, the, the opposition who is standing against it in, in Turkey. Um, we heard remarks from the foreign minister who thought it was ill-advised to uh, make remarks to deport uh, the people, obviously understanding the PR disaster that that would have uh, on, on, on Turkey as well as other uh, liberals and other members of parliament that have uh, been voicing their concern about uh, this, this approach. So I think what we're seeing is, is the more interesting part. We, we, all, we all know historically what's happened, but the more interesting part is how the debate is taking place inside of Turkey as to why that would not be such a good idea. Of course, um, the, the amount of 100,000 illegal immigrants is um, contested uh, the numbers are anywhere from uh, uh, 10 to 20,000 is probably more, more reasonable. And frankly, uh, it wouldn't be such a bad thing for them to come back to Armenia and, uh, and, and, and really try to uh, reinforce the, uh, the homeland as opposed to uh, immigrating to, uh, to Turkey and elsewhere. Michael, any additions? Well, Sean covered the issue really well, so I'll, I'll provide a historical context. Uh, this is really... Uh, a new wrinkle on an old tactic. Uh, the minorities in Turkey, including the, the old uh, Armenian community, largely in Istanbul, as well as the Jewish community, have been under threat when similar resolutions have come up in the past. Uh, in 1982, uh, Israel had planned a conference about the Holocaust and other genocides, and there were to be a few Armenian scholars who were going to speak at the conference, and Turkey had made an Im implied threat that the Jewish community in Turkey would be under threat if Armenians were included in the conference. And then in 1990, there was a resolution here in the United States, a genocide resolution. And once again, uh, the Turkish Jews and Turkish Armenians, uh, there was an, imp uh, an implication that uh, they might be threatened should the resolution succeed. So uh, sadly, this is, this is another wrinkle to, to an old tactic. You know, lately we've been talking about protocols and uh, Armeno-Turkish uh, relations, and uh, there, uh, there is the diaspora I mean, relations. There are so many topics on the table which I'd like to discuss. Let us move into the protocols. Uh, uh, Shant, uh, uh, you know that there has to be some type of a solution uh, to the situation between uh, Turkey and Armenia. Uh, uh, what was your response to the protocols? My initial reaction was uh, a lot of skepticism, and I, I, I must admit that initially I wasn't uh, fully informed of the details, but I think uh, what everyone should do if they haven't already done so is get a copy of it and, and read it, because it, it, the, the devil is in the details. And after reading it and, and speaking with um, several people who are much more involved in the, uh, the, the lobbying efforts uh, for, for the Armenian issues, I got more comfortable with it. And at the end of the day, I think um, our approach over the years has reached a point where uh, direct dialogue with Turkey is the only way forward. Um, we, are, we are starting to see um, the movements inside of Turkey, which I think ultimately will, will within, within Turkish debate, uh, cause this issue to, to get recognized. And then I think from the perspective of um, the, the historical commission and also about the issue of the, the borders and Karabakh and all that. Well, if you read the, the document closely, in, in fact, it doesn't mention any of those things. And, and, and the historical commission is not a historical commission about the, the Armenian genocide, but it is about a historical commission to deal with uh, uh, the histories, the past histories of the, uh, the two countries. And uh, I think what I was reaffirmed by was President Sarkisian's remarks uh, when he was in London uh, last month, really standing his ground on that there is no intention of the Armenian government 
to um, uh, concede on, on both territorial issues as well as uh, the, the issue of recognition of the Armenian Genocide. So I have come around to moving forward, albeit it's not a perfect document, uh, but moving forward with engagement is the better approach than continuing uh, to have this debate through, through other countries and exerting pressure on Turkey through, through Western countries. Michael, anything to add? Uh, I agree with a lot of what Sean said. I would say that it's important for people to realize that it's very difficult for either side to make peace. Um, if you look at the Israeli-Palestinian situation, likewise, anyone who goes to the negotiation is going to have to give up things that his constituents have been demanding for decades. And uh, so that person is going to look like, to some people, like a sellout. Um, yeah. Now, yeah. the protocols are, for both sides, for Turkey and Armenia, are undergoing the same kind of criticism from their constituents. And for the Armenians, the constituency is more complicated because it includes not only Armenians of Armenia, but includes Armenians of the di diaspora as well. So it's a, it's a very difficult thing to negotiate these things. And the one thing about the Historical Commission, there's really no academic debate left about the veracity of the genocide. And a lot of people assume that the commission is intended to undermine the academics and the consensus that Armenians worked so hard to develop over the last few decades. And that may be true. And if it is true, then it should not be supported. But it could be that the commission might be used by Turkish authorities as a face-saving way to finally acknowledge the truth. Uh, you have to realize that Turkey has not only been denying the genocide, it has been, it has been, uh, engineered an active campaign of denial. And this campaign has lasted f for decades. For it to go back and simply say, oh, well, we were wrong, is very difficult to do. It basically has to admit that it was not only wrong about what the history was, but that it was actively lying. And it could be that this commission might be used. Again, I don't know the inner workings of how Turkish uh, leadership is thinking, but it might be used as a face-saving gesture for them to come to terms with the truth. Michael, when you go out throughout the nation and read your book and present your books, what are some of the concerns people have concerning the protocols and what kind of a, a relationship does the diaspora today have with Armenia? Is there any cooperation, any coordinated activities, or where is the difficulty? Well, the concerns are that, as I said, that Armenia might give up rights that Armenians from the diaspora feel like they should not give up. Um, and the concerns are that all these efforts that the diaspora has put over the past few decades will be wasted uh, by Armenia's leadership. And those efforts were really from the diaspora because up to 1991 there was no Armenia. So the diaspora was at the forefront of confronting Turkey about the genocide and about trying to preserve uh, rights to reparations and land and, and whatnot. So there is a lot of fear that Armenia will be giving up uh, the work of the diaspora, the hard-earned uh, work of the diaspora. In terms of cooperation, um, generally when, in terms of uh, the resolutions when they've come up, there's been very little cooperation in the past. Uh, Armenia does not actively lobby uh, for genocide resolutions, at least not in the United States. So it's been largely a diasporan effort. Now, in terms of the protocols, uh, there's been a, a split with some in the diaspora supporting the protocols, some um, vehemently criticizing it, and, and many other people just waiting to see what happens one way or the other. I don't think the, the coordination has been very good in that I think where the Armenian leadership um, made a mistake was in failing to develop a consensus before announcing the protocols. Uh, think about it. If you're negotiating with someone and you have your partner standing next to you and you're disagreeing openly in front of the, the other person, well, it's going to hurt your negotiating effort. So whether you're against the protocols or for the protocols, that's not the point. The point is that it, it would have been better to have built a consensus on where Armenia and where the diaspora stand and go in with a united voice rather than the divided voice that uh, we've entered into this process with. We'll be back.